All right, today we're going to look at a really cool tool uh, that just got released um, by an artist by the name of Bear Sharktopus or AI Curio. Um, they were very nice uh, to sort of let me check this thing out as they were building it. Um, so I'm going to walk you through sort of how it works. So um, it's called Looking Glass. Uh, the idea behind it is that you can upload one or multiple images. Um, you can then fine tune a model and then from there you can uh, actually generate new images based on the images you upload. So I've sort of described this as like what I wanted Syngan to be like. Uh, and in fact, um, it's probably better than that in a lot of ways. So here's a good example of um, you could upload essentially two images. I assume maybe what they uploaded is one Wojak and then this image. And what you get are sort of the images in between it, or you can upload a single image and we'll generate variations based on that. Um, so I should mention this first version of Looking Glass, which is 1.1. Um, the uh, AI Curio just released it publicly, um, but future versions are going to be available only through their Patreon account. So uh, the Patreon account is Bear Sharktopus Studios. Um, I'll drop links to this into the YouTube um, description just for so people have it. Um, if you haven't checked out uh, their work before, I highly recommend checking it out. They have two things. One is called AI Curio, which is, I guess, maybe their more curated version. You can send them requests and they'll go ahead and like, it's basically as they're working in progress on new versions or things, they'll go ahead and upload uh, additional options or different like versions based on what you uh, send them. Um, they're also uploading a lot of their own work. So here's another example of this where someone uploaded their own work and they got weird Picasso versions back, um, those sort of things. So they also have a bot. It's called AI Curio Bot. Um, and you can uh, just send the bot a bot request and it will generate images from it. I don't think this uses looking glass. I think it uses just like a clip VQGAN um, or some other version of a clip generator um, to generate this, uh, but you can go check it out. And uh, it looks like admissions are closed right now, but I guess uh, it's sort of like on a, it spins up a new instance and runs every 24 hours. So I think you can send it uh, when it's available, you can send it requests and it'll generate images automatically and then post them to its bot channel. So it's cool stuff. Um, I highly recommend uh, supporting Bear Sharktopus. Uh, I've really enjoyed seeing all the work they make. They make lots of really interesting stuff and are constantly updating it. So definitely check it out. All right, so Looking Glass. So let's get started. So um, Looking Glass, if you're familiar, well, let's actually get started by running some of these cells. So I'll drop the link of here, this into the YouTube channel as well. Um, the instructions are all written out here, but I'll just sort of like let you know how it works as we go through it. Um, the idea is you upload either a single image or a folder of images, um, and then you run a bunch of uh, different cells and you're able to go from there. So first off, let's start um, with just getting this set up. So we'll go ahead and run the setup cells. So there's four cells here. So if you close this, if this is open, just click this little uh, close icon to sort of close up this folder. And then you can hit run on all four of these cells. That's Bug. She also is very excited about this project. Um, and if you open these cells, if you click here, it will tell you like what GPU you have. So I'm running on a V100. Uh, one note is that uh, this is pretty slow on like the free versions of Colab. So like a K80 or a T4. Um, so I highly recommend if you do a lot of this work in Colab, you want to pay for Colab either through Pro or Pro 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 Pro, 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 Pro Plus. Um, Pro is ten bucks a month. Pro Plus is fifty bucks a month. Um, fifty bucks a month is a lot, but you get really really high power GPUs that are pretty much worth the value. Um, so again, it's just whatever is available to you in your bank account, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So um, while this runs, we're gonna talk a little bit about just how it works. So. This under the hood is using um, Dolly. It's using the Russian public generated version of Dolly. So Dolly came out about a year ago now. Um, it was created by OpenAI. Um, you probably saw when they first announced they released Clip as well as Dolly. I don't think Dolly ever actually got publicly released. So a Russian company or a Russian research group or something went ahead and made their own version of Dolly. Um, and that came out maybe two or three months ago and really only got picked up steam in about the past month or so. Uh, but any, basically, anyone now people are using this version of Dolly to generate new images. And Dolly, I believe, is a is a variational audio encoder, um, which basically means you give it an image and it spits back kind of the same image. Uh, but what's cool about this tool, and I think what they're do, what uh, AI Curio is doing here, is that you can give it an image and it can tell you sort of the location of that image in the variational audio encoder space, and then you can also sort of like move it around a little bit, right? So if you want the same image. Um, but maybe slightly variant, you might move your position in, locate in the latent space a little bit. And then if you upload multiple images, you can get sort of multiple locations, and then you could sort of interpolate between those in many ways. So um, I haven't really confirmed that with, with AI Curio, but I assume that's sort of what's going on here. 
um, or something similar. Um, and a couple of things that's really nice about this particular tool is um, recently they added the ability to do multiple, like sort of different resolutions. Um, I believe Dolly is only 256 by 256, but there are some tricks to be able to generate different resolutions, um, those sort of things. But I should say you really won't get the highest resolution image out of this. Um, and if you decide to go something that is outside of the 256 by 256 size, uh, it's going to take a lot longer to generate. So for this demo, we'll just do the small, uh, the smallest size, which is the 256 square, um, and then we'll go from there. So while this is running, I'm also going to upload an image. Um, so I'm just going to start with just one image. I'm going to grab uh, this image here, which is just a thing that I've been playing with. Um, I found it works pretty well in, in, in using this tool. Um, just happens to be like sort of this abstract illustration of flowers. Let's go ahead and upload that by dragging it into our collab uh, file section here. And I should mention it takes a little bit of time to get this up and running because you have to download this very large uh, model. So you have to download a 2.63 gigabyte uh, model. I believe this is the Dolly model. And then you have to download a couple other things as well. So um, like you have to download the VAE and then apparently a tokenizer. So there are some it does take a little bit of time. It probably took me a couple of minutes. I'm on a V100 here, which is pretty fast. So if you're on a K80 or T4, it might be quite slow. Okay, so now I've got all this set up. So the basic version is just you want to give it the name of your file. So my name happens to be Pushwar. So we'll just um, copy the path here. I don't believe you actually need the full path. You just If it's in the content folder, which is this main folder here, you can use just the name and the extension. Um, so what this does is it's going to fine tune our Dolly model, um, and fine tuning is basically a process of sort of uh, training a little bit more on top of the pre-existing model. Um, this setting here, uh, epoch amount, determines how many iterations it trains for. Um, I tend to turn this a little bit lower. Uh, I find that if you set it a little bit lower, um, you tend to get more various varied results. Um, if you set it higher, you tend to get basically the same image back a little bit. Um, similarly with that is this universe similarity uh, setting. This is how different do you want your images to be from the original. So if you set it to low, you should get sort of like more or less like very subtle, slight variations on the image you're uploading. If you set it to high, you should get really different results. So let's for this one, let's just do medium and we'll see what happens. Um, this, you do have to put something in here, uh, but if you leave it as is, it's fine. Uh, this does use... Um, sort of a, a tokenizer, a word tokenizer, but because we're just looking at images, I don't think it really matters what you put in here. So we can leave in whatever this Aphex Twin example is. Um, collage options, so uh, basically when this finishes running, you're going to get a grid of images as well as a folder of images. And this says how many images to get back. So you can ask for one image, uh, you can ask for four images, nine images, or 25. I generally said it's 25 just because I want to make sure I get as many images as possible. Um, I don't think collage amount, at least in the version that I've used before, does anything. Um, yeah, Akira, if you're listening, maybe we can confirm that this doesn't do anything. Um, and then we'll look at this next. Uh, so um, low memory, if you are on a K80, you probably want to check this button. Um, if you are on a T4, maybe you want to check this as well. Uh, if you're on one of the V100s or whatever, you're probably fine to leave this as is. Um, this button here, uh, usually what it does is when you build your grid collage, um, it'll upload the original image as well as a part of that collage. Um, I think that's kind of helpful if you're going to tweet this out. So like maybe leave it on just so you can sort of see what it looks like. Um, but if you're just looking to get images out to utilize in some other tool, you can sort of unclick this and, sk and skip it. Um, as I mentioned, you can resize your images. Um, it does slow down uh, generation quite a lot. So for this, I'm actually going to leave it off just so we can do a quick demo. And um, I would say play with this if you want to. You can play, you can change the width and height. Um, but I would say if you do anything larger than 256 on one of the sides, it does get a little messy. Uh, kind of up to you, though. And I mentioned that you could do multiple images. Um, for this demo, I'm not going to do that, just because, again, it also adds a little bit more time to the training process. Uh, essentially, what you would do is you create a new folder over here, and you would sort of call it images. And you can upload multiple images to that. And if you do that, um, what it does then is it's able to train across all of your images. And then it will, again, sort of maybe give you interpolations between those images. Um, this is a case of where if you look at uh, the um, AI Curio Twitter feed, you can sort of see examples of what they're doing with uh, multiple, like two different images or that sort of thing. So 
Um, play with it if you want to. I'm going to skip it for this demo. Maybe I'll do another demo on just how to do that. So for this, I'm going to uncheck multiple image tuning. So we're just going to train or train and fine tune off this one image and generate uh, variations on this one image. So now that this is all set up in my settings here, I'm going to run this cell, just make sure it's saved in my session. And now we need to go. One thing I always skip is I always miss this, this cell right underneath here. So make sure you run this right afterward. And then uh, again, we've got a bunch of like sort of additional uh, collapsible code here. So just click this and then run these four cells. Should run very quickly. And now we've got the fine tuning process. So we're going to run this cell. And you'll see here that what we're doing is we're fine tuning our image and we are fine tuning it based on the number of epochs that we provided. And you should also notice that your loss score drops here. So this is essentially a graph of your loss score changing over time. So because your image is not in uh, Dolly to begin with, um, it'll have a very high loss score. But as it trains over time, uh, your loss score should drop. Now, what I was sort of told is that we want the value to be between like two and a half and three. This is looking a little high. Um, there's a couple of things I could do here. One is I could um, alter my epoch count. So you go back up here and change my epoch count to some like 60 and rerun it. Um, I could maybe play with the universe similarity. Uh, maybe if I want to set it to low, that would give me a different result. Um, either way, like this is probably fine. Um, in fact, we'll run it and we'll just see how different our results are with a loss of 4.6. But this is a, a good number to look at because if you're unhappy with the results, you might want to play with this and tweak it to see if you can get your loss score lower or higher. If your loss score is lower, you're more likely to get images that are very similar to the image you've uploaded. Um, if your loss score is higher, um, then it will be different from what you've got. So now we'll go ahead and run these image generation cells. Um, and I believe these two cells are the ones that are going to take a little bit of time to run. Nope, I was wrong. That one's fast. Uh, this is the one that will probably take a little bit of time to run. So you can go ahead and run this cell. And the, amount, the length of time this is going to take is going to be determined based on how many images you requested. So if you requested something, we can actually look at the code here. Um, if you requested 25 images, you'll see that this needs to repeat six times. Um, so this process that you're seeing here below is going to need to repeat six times in order to get 25 images out. Uh, if you set it to nine, um, you will see a lower value. And if you're on a slow GPU and you had to click that low memory, um, you will also have to repeat it even more times. So if you have to do this 24 times to get 24 images on a low setting, you'll see that this takes, see how long it take. It took about a minute for each one of these. So if you're on a low memory setting and has to run 24 times, um, you're going to wait here for 25 minutes for this whole thing to run. So just be aware that uh, if you are on a cheaper GPU with a cheaper CPU, uh, you will likely be sitting here and waiting for a while. Um, in the past, what I've done, um, if I want to generate something like 100 images, one of the things that I've done is I've just copied this cell multiple times um, and just run it sort of in the background. You can just run this behind the scenes um, and wait for them all to finish. You can maybe copy this four times That'll give you 100 images. Um, and then you just need to know the math is like 24 times 4. So like, you know, you're waiting, uh, what is that, an, about an hour and a half. Um, so just make sure you come back and don't forget about it. Because Colab, if you forget about it uh, and you are on the free plan, it'll probably cut you off like as soon as it's done running and you might lose your files. So set a timer for yourself. Do something to remind yourself that uh, that is a thing you need to remember to wait on. Um, so just, you know, be aware that it does take some time for these to process. Uh, but I would say this is still much, much faster than, say, training your own StyleGAN model um, or trying to train your own VAE. Um, the fine-tuning process is still fast enough that, you know, this only taking an hour to generate multiple images isn't really that bad. Um, it's kind of a, a nice process, uh, and it's fairly quick, all things considered. Let's see how we're doing here. All right, so we still have three more iterations of this to run. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause the recording, and I'll wait until this is finished, and then I'll come back. All right, so my training process, or I guess my image generation process just finished. So you can see here, um, I have generated 24, 25 new images. Um, and all of these are based on my previous image. So you can sort of see here like how diverse your results are. 
So again, remember my loss score was about a four point something, um, which means my results should be fairly diverse. Uh, I've done this with a lower loss score and you get a lot more of sort of the same image in like slightly different orientations and formats. Um, but I really love the results here because you really do see the variations upon your image that this model could, could contain, you know? Um, you'll see some that have fairly similar color palettes and others that have very diverse color palettes um, and even some that provide really weird sort of more geometric results versus the more, I mean, organic flower shapes that I've uploaded. Uh, so I find this is really, really cool. You can run this cell again and it will generate 25 new images for you. Um, and all these images get saved into the output folder right here. Um, and these are, if you check, these should be 256 by 256. Whereas this grid image, if you were to download this, this won't give you the full high res images. So just be aware of that. Um, lastly, there is a cell here to run that will zip up your folder called output.zip. There is, not finished yet. I guess it is finished. Just, uh, it adds the, the, a date stamp at the end of it. Um, so you go ahead and download this, this file. And once it's downloaded, then you'll have all your images. And then from there, you can make sure you shut off your machine. Um, I always recommend shutting off your collab uh, instance um, when you're done with it, because if you don't, uh, you, there is like some sort of algorithmic penalty for leaving your machine running without shutting it off. So the way to shut it off is just to go to here, manage sessions, and then hit terminate on the correct notebook. Don't close the wrong notebook. Um, so that's just like a really basic example of looking glass. I might do another tutorial on how to upload uh, multiple images and how to do the blending tool. Um, but I think this for this, this will get everyone started. Um, so if you make some cool images, let me know. Um, shoot me what they look like either on my Slack channel or over Twitter. Um, and I hope you enjoy using Looking Glass. Again, this first version is public, um, but later versions are only available through Patreon. So I highly recommend uh, supporting Bear Sharktopus. It's fairly inexpensive um, and they're doing lots of great work. So uh, definitely check that out. All right, that's it for today. Uh, see you next time.